I am Dr. Karishma Kagod, board certified plastic surgeon from Bangalore and I am the MD of Dr. Karishma Aesthetics. Plastic and cosmetic surgery has evolved leaps and bounds over the last few decades. When we talk about specifically plastic cosmetic surgery, I think the most common procedure one would have heard of is liposuction, body contouring. Liposuction by itself is more than 40 to 50 year old procedure. It's not something new. But over the last 40-50 years, it has evolved significantly from generation 1 type of liposuction to now which we have the 4th generation liposuction devices. Initially, we used to use manual liposuction which was uh, more harsh on the patients. We would see slow recovery, more bleeding. Uh, whereas today, uh, in the last 10 years, we have evolved from first generation manual liposuction to power liposuction, laser and now ultrasound assisted. There have the, now as we look at the International Society top statistics, we can see that the top five most common aesthetic procedures performed is uh, liposuction and body contouring, tummy tuck, uh, rhinoplasty or the nose job, eyelid surgery and also uh, body contouring, buttock surgeries. So these are the five most common top surgeries done all across the world and all across the globe as per the survey. India stands in fact in the top 10 of the rising countries where the highest number of plastic cosmetic surgeries are performed. So I feel uh, when it comes to aesthetic surgery, the biggest challenge is getting through to insurance. So there is a vast population of people who want to do cosmetic surgery. So it is a desire, it is a want. Unfortunately, across the globe, as well as in India, we are paying GST on these procedures. And there are a lot of patients who come to us not just for cosmetic changes or cosmetic enhancement. A lot of functionality and medical reasons are involved behind these cosmetic procedure. For example, the biggest challenge I would say is for a woman doing a breast reduction procedure. Now why they come to us is not just because they want to make the breast small, but there is an abnormal enlargement for these women. So they suffer from a lot of functional and medical issues like severe back pains, neck pains, postural changes. They have a lot of uh, changes, spondylitis developing because of such heavy breasts they are socially stigmatized, they are socially embarrassed, they cannot walk out in public, they cannot exercise well. So I feel uh, it has been a challenge uh, for us to try to get certain aesthetic plastic surgical procedures uh, through to the government to make them understand that these are also functional requirements. That woman is not so concerned about aesthetic but it is for medical reasons that they need to do these procedures. For a lot of people undergo depression, they are not so confident and a lot of self-confidence boost is gained by a lot of these procedures. And few people also come for deformities, deformities in the face, deformities in the body, which we can correct with plastic surgery. So challenges are that a lot of the procedures that we do in plastic surgery are not covered by insurance, which becomes a problem. For example, I do breast reconstructive procedures for uh, women post breast cancer and breast removal we make create a new breast we do breast reconstruction at cancer hospital now the cancer surgery is covered by insurance but the plastic surgery aspect now is it wrong for a woman to want her breasts which have been removed due to cancer well that is not covered under insurance in many hospitals by many insurance companies so these in many aspects plastic surgery even though here it is aesthetic but it is reconstructing a breast for a woman who has lost her actual self. So looking at the market in plastic surgery, plastic aesthetic surgery has grown uh, tremendously over the last 5 to 10 years in the global survey which was done by the International Society of Aesthetic Plastic Surgeons called the ISAPS. It showed that more than 41.3% increase in plastic surgeries at 2022 over the last four to five years there has been almost more than a 50 percent rise in non-surgical 
uh, procedures and uh, more than 20 to 25 percent rise in uh, plastic aesthetic surgeries, liposuction being the most common. So yes, the market is only showing a rising trend and if you look at the Indian economy, I think the rate of plastic surgery is going high, the affordability is improving, the economic standards have improved. So we are seeing a general rising trend over the last five to eight years in Indian plastic surgery. So Dr. Karishma Aesthetics is our brand which is a daycare cosmetic center and we, I started it in 2018 and as of this year we are going to complete five years. Um, in general, my journey started as uh, a medical student, aspiring medical student who got interest in surgery and I always wanted to take up surgery. Uh, at in about in the early 2000s, there was still a male dominated uh, profession taking up surgery. So most of uh, my colleagues were taking up non-surgical fields. However, I had a keen interest in uh, surgery as well as plastic surgery specifically. So my journey started with finishing six years of uh, medical school and then we had to do three years of masters in general surgery to finally then super specialize in plastic surgery which is another three years of an MCH degree. So in general to uh, become a plastic surgeon I think about total 13 years of education has to go through it. Uh, post which uh, I think I had more interest in aesthetic surgery which led me to kind of go for further fellowships in cosmetic surgery international. So I traveled about four or five countries, uh, Italy, the UK, Dubai, uh, Istanbul and Turkey and learned various aspects of cosmetic surgery which I was interested in, mainly rhinoplasty, body contouring, uh, breast uh, reconstructive and aesthetic surgery. Uh, completed my fellowship for one or two years and uh, I initially uh, joined back my uh, college uh, which was in MI, where I did my MBBS from that is Kolar as an assistant professor, set up the department of plastic surgery there then moved on to working with the corporate hospitals, headed the department of Asta CMI hospital. Finally, I decided that I think I have the number of years of experience behind my back. Furthermore, I felt that um, in India, we have very few female plastic surgeons. In my city, Bangalore particularly, um, I did not have uh, many female plastic surgeons who had their own private uh, plastic surgery center. So I feel it would, I, I felt it would have been a challenge and I love challenges and um, I think that put me to Dr. Karishma Aesthetics and I felt that being a woman, I can use my name as um, the brand so that uh, people, uh, you know, connect with me and connect with my brand. And uh, I think uh, five years back, I was probably the first uh, female uh, plastic surgeon to open her own daycare center in Karnataka. I decided why not have all three. So I think we were the first clinics in this city to have uh, dental cosmetics, uh, cosmetic dentistry, uh, plastic surgery and in-house operating theater along with cosmetology, dermatology, everything under one roof. And that was a new concept which I wanted to bring and obviously set my clinic uh, with uh, five star, star uh, you know, five star ambience have all the international facilities and all the latest equipments. We were one of the first to launch the latest generation liposuction device, the VASO in Bangalore and I was the first to launch that and I wanted to bring international medicine into my city. I think my future plan would be to train young plastic surgeons, young plastic surgeons who are passing out. Uh, I would like to get on the academic side of our profession. Uh, make my clinic open to young uh, generations to come to learn, uh, continue to advance on my technology, advance on my techniques um, and I think the golden years are ahead of me. I would like to expand my brand.